I'm not going to take a plea deal. It's an arms trafficking. Uh, mor morning, everyone. I'm the pressure-fed astronaut, the uh, only neutron critic. Today, I'm going to do the second half of my criticizing neutron series. Link in the description for part one. In part one, we discuss the launch market that Neutron is trying to break into, how it will and willn't fit in. We also discussed how the island nation of New Zealand does not actually exist, and instead a deception by Australians. For this video, we'll be looking at the legal issues for Neutron, as well as examining Neutron on a technical level. Ready? You criminals lost a war to birds! Why on earth should we let any of you have missile technology, let alone reconnaissance capabilities? We can't let this technology fall on the wrong hands. What's that? They couldn't even fly. They couldn't even fly? What's wrong with you people? There are three issues I see with Neutron as it is presented by Rocket Lab. The structures, propulsion, and configuration of the vehicle itself. Neutron is planning on following Electron and having its airframe built out of carbon composites, which have great strength apparently, as demonstrated in this test. Let's try carbon composite, but not any kind of carbon composite, a Rocket Lab carbon composite. Watch out, Peter! Now, this test is incredibly dishonest. It assumes that Neutron will be attacked by cranes during flight, which is incredibly unlikely. There's also the environmental concerns about using carbon composites. Carbon composites are primarily composed of carbon, much like trees. In fact, to build a single Neutron vehicle would require serious deforestation. So much for caring about the environment, Peter. Instead, Neutron should be built out of pipeline steel to keep it out of the hands of oil companies. There are two issues I see with Neutron's propulsion system. But first, let's let Peter talk about it. Introduce you to Rocket Lab's newest engine, Archimedes. Archimedes? What kind of name is that? Ah, screw it. We don't need to push the engines to their absolute maximum. And the cycle is also very simple. It's a gas generator cycle. These are all the things you want when you have to build an engine that can be reused over and over again. There is no point in having an engine that is absolutely busting its bolts at 11,000 psi. While Rocket Lab is clearly thinking in the right direction by making an insanely high complex and high performance engine, they haven't gone far enough. Pumps cost money, they're hard to develop, they're finicky, and they're much more complex. Having more parts inherently drives up the complexity of the system, which will make the repair and refurbishment requirements even more stringent. Instead, Neutron should use a pressure-fed system. Sure, they are lower performance, but they are much more simple to develop and operate than any pump-fed system. Then there's the propellants. Over 320 seconds of ISP, its propellants are liquid oxygen and methane, Methane is the egocentric alkane of carbon, I see. Both of these propellants are problematic. Liquid oxygen, as you can guess, is made of oxygen. You know, the oxygen that you breathe. So not only is Rocket Lab deforesting to build Neutron, they're also going to steal our air to build their frivolous rocket. Then there's the issue with the fact that liquid oxygen is cryogenic, which means it needs to be cool. Now, when you think Australia, do you think cold? Of course not. For an alternative oxidizer, I suggest Neutron uses white fuming nitric acid. Woofna has the benefit of being room temperature storable, made from fertilizer, and is incredibly dense. Like me. Methane poses its own problems too. Environmentally, and as just as a propellant from structural standpoint. Methane is incredibly low density, which means that your rocket would be bigger, which would need nor trees to be cut down. And environmentally, methane is one of the worst greenhouse gases, which means that Rocket Lab is just an environmental catastrophe waiting to happen. First, they're going to take our air to use as an oxidizer. Then, they're going to deforest, which will replenish our air to build the rocket. And finally, using methane as a greenhouse gas will heat up the earth to make it uninhabitable. 
Peter, you monster! I did an extensive trade study to determine a better alternative for fuel. Diesel oil. Diesel oil is a dense and high-performance hydrocarbon. I primarily selected the fuel due to its use in diesel electric locomotives. Trains are good. Therefore, diesel oil is good. The overall configuration of the system doesn't make much sense. Reusability is only really feasible if you have a high flight rate, so neutrons should be re-engineered to be an ultra-expendable launcher instead. Now, luckily, with my structural and propulsion system changes, this should be a lot easier to do. First things first, we're going to add another stage. This will improve overall launcher performance, while also loosening the requirements on the individual stages themselves. Secondly, while the two-stage inline configuration is nice, it's a bit of a classic, we're going to need to change this to something much more modular. Modularity will increase the performance capabilities of Neutron so that it can accommodate a wider range of customers and payloads. We'll also remove the inline configuration and make Neutron parallel staged, especially since it's a modular system. This will also make fueling operations a lot simpler, moving it to the base of the vehicle instead of you know, a tower. Third, structurally speaking, the new Neutron will use common propulsion units instead of dedicated stages. While dedicated stages allows for better optimization of the vehicle overall, those are more complicated, harder to develop, and will cost a lot more than simply mass-producing common propulsion units. And with mass-produced common propulsion units, you could build an ultra-modular launch vehicle that could accommodate a much wider range of payloads than a paltry 8 tons. Wait, this makes the rocket... Fixed it.